first chuck of 2006. Here we go. Goodbye. Got him high that time. Yeah, I and held. he slides off the back. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> Thirty grain bullet, seventeen caliber, three hundred and forty yards. Curse black. And then some. Goodbye. Good night. Good fun. Good, good fun. Let's go find some more. Down and couldn't tell on that second one. And I was on the area and I saw something move. And it didn't look real natural. He's back. I see him, I'm on it. Him. Yeah. Let me know when you get ready. Good night. Good night. That one up above left. How long? He left. Five something? He's gone. <laughs> he took off. He was 497, but he took off. Nice Not the shot. most comfortable position in the world, but fairly steady. Uh, we've got chucks out here from 400. One I just killed was 400, out to about 600. Good fun. That's a goner. Hit right midsection hind quarter. Nice shot. Ready. Good night. Nice shot. He's a big boy. So let somebody else have some of this fun. <laughs> Don't want to be a chuck hog, a hog hog. He's one on beneath the bush. You ought to be able to see good, Tim. He's sticking out real well now. Even from down low, you should have a good view. Oh, yeah. Big hog. <laughs> oh! Got another one right there, Tim. Just that right of the bush. That was a big boy, too. Where, did, where is he, Dave? Just same right spot. of the bush. Hey, look at the same spot, Tim. Oh, yeah. That's where the first one I seen yep. was. Yep, piled him. Yep, piled him. 
a launch, gut wapkin, and a gut pile. That was quite the little spinner. Now that's the way I like Idaho trucks to be, you know. Come on out, display yourself. Give us half a chance, my precious. There's another head, I think, up there. It's gone. No, the one I'm looking no, at. No, he's still just there. Chilling. Right. Yep. There's a head looking to the right. Yeah, there's a crack running down just off to the. I'm on one up there on the ridge. I believe I am too. You by the bush? No, you're up by the white spot. Oh yeah. I think we're all ready. Did you hear that come back off of that poor thing? Wow. That was a gut punch. Just a whop. The old That's... Ackley's jacking them like it generally do. That's too much fun. <laughs> Wanted to die. Where did she even just got him in the rock hole? Can't make them all fly, I guess. No, you just want them to roll off. Pretty launch pad, though. I was expecting to see a good triple gainer. There, there's two of them. Yeah, I fighting. see. See one good now. Right on top. Just low, I think. They're both still there. That was all over him, though. Good shot. I think you were just maybe four inches low. Which one are you going for? Right. Okay. Got him. Nice. Nicely done. That right, other one's still there. Yeah. Same hold. And they're little, too. This one's really small. I think you might have got him too. I'm not sure, but he, he acted kind of hit. Yeah, he did. I for sure got that first one though. I'd have to believe you because I saw him go right off the back of the rock. 640 yards. 670. Six, 670. 675. 675. Got 675. One, one for sure. Maybe the second one might have just went. I missed the first shot, hit the second, not sure about the third, at least one for three, maybe two for three at 675. This little baby, spot baby, likes baby. you over here. Yeah, the old Ackley, the old Remington, jacking them as usual. Got another chuck out. Just left of the red rock about five feet. See his face up there, Tim. See him? Looking left, now looking at us. Yeah. Now looking left. Looking pretty. Yeah. yeah. Let me know, Tim. That's the one that rolled left. Okay. Stay there. Anytime. There's one in the, oh, I didn't see that one. I'm on him. Nice. I got him. There's two more right out there. Good pile, man. Over the pile. Yeah, I see him. Went back, now he's way left. I'm on him. Nice. 
Nice toss. Where'd he go? Here he comes. Ready? Yep. He causes another one to take off running over the tumbleweeds up right and high of him. He went behind that one there road he is. back out into the open. Gorgeous. Good shot. Nice Hoping he didn't get limbed on him. Yeah, I think he might give us a tail wag. Tail wag's kind of a official sign of a job well done. Got him. Nailed him. Nice shot. Okay, Dave, come but down and left from him. There's a huge one out there. You can see him over that left and low from the from the sand spot there's a big huge one out there all right Ready? yep he's running sit got nice. him nice. nice got him on the run <laughs> nice <laughs> tumbled I, his a I, hole i better quit give tim a chance that's uh what, one at 409 and one four fourteen. Four fifteen, two for two. You're up, Tim. You know, he's on him. Just span left ten yards. <laughs> Goodbye. That was a fiendish whop that came back off of that, too. He went back down the little depression there, never to Love come back. Love the good shooting rifle. Yeah. There's two, one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Little one and a little bit bigger one. Oh yeah. Looks like you got your choice, lower or higher. Upper one's looking best. Okay. Not anymore. The other one's still offering. Jack another one in. He's looking there like what happened? Still there, just beautiful. Just oh, high. Right over him. Yep. All right, I'm on him, Tim. Got him. Now move down and left. The other one's still. No, he disappeared. From the snag, Dave, go one big boulder, two big boulders, and then three or four little ones, and he's out there in the grass up near the fence line. I got him. You're good to go, Tim. You're cleared for liftoff. Oh! Toss to the left. Uh, there was another one to the right of that one, Tim. To the right? Yeah, up, up a little bit to the right out in the grass. I don't know if he's still there or not. Yeah, heading right to him. over. Heading right towards the compadre. I see him. Nice. Three hundred and thirty. He's all flattened out on that little launch pad.
Nice. <laughs> Gotta love it. Just plucking them off their little launch pad like that. He wasn't showing us much, but old Remington don't need much. That smacked him. There's another one right under. As usual, well, maybe not as usual, but not uncommon, it's been a tough morning. We've seen a few here and there, but it's been 90 degrees down in this canyon and not seeing much. The sun, the, some clouds have come over, the temperatures dropped 10 or 15 degrees and they're starting to pop out and uh, we're starting to launch them and have a blast. <laughs> Gots do love it. Got Nice little buckskin colored one. All right. Okay, Dave. The top reef. Come down to the next set of rocks. And then down and left, and you like a square rock with a nice little buckskin setting on it. The reef I'm looking at it is the square rock kind of reddish. Yeah, and now he's kind of out of sight. I can see his head. Yeah, awesome. I see him as well. That got him. Nicely done. His headless corpse flopping around. It's a beautiful thing. Take a minute and, and talk about some of the, the basic equipment that we use uh, on our chuck hunts. Start out with the rifle. I get a lot of email uh, asking questions about various aspects of varmint hunting, but the most common questions by far have to do with rifles and chamberings and stuff like that. Uh, before I, I say anything about this rifle, I want to take a second though and point out that most of the rifles you see us using on our videos are, are custom rifles and wildcat chamberings. They're kind of exotic in some cases. That's a whole separate hobby unto itself, rifles and hand loading. You don't need to get into that to have just as much success, just as much fun doing this as we do. Uh, it just happens that, that I've got a gun addiction, so we've got some pretty neat equipment to use. But you can get out here with your bone, stock, factory, Remington, Ruger, Savage, Winchester, 
220, 243, 220 Swift with factory ammo and you'll have just as much fun, kill just as many chucks as we do. Um, all that said, this rifle here, particular rifle, is, is my all-time favorite chuck rifle. Out of all the rifles I've owned and used to shoot rock chucks, this one has, has become the favorite. It's a Remington 700 action that's been fully trued and blue printed. Uh, Lilja barrel with a 12 twist, and it's chambered for the 22-250 Ackley Improved. Um, the loads I'm using are a 55 grain VMAX bullet at moderate velocity. Uh, this load's pushing them at 3,800 feet per second. Uh, I could load them up hotter, but at that, that range, this rifle is just extremely accurate. This rifle averages well under a half inch for five shots at 100 yards. Uh, typical groups run uh, about .350 inch, well under a half inch. Um, the optic that I'm using, I've actually gone through a couple scopes on this rifle. Uh, have settled on this Leupold 6.5 by 20. Uh, this happens to be an extended focus range model. Uh, the extended focus range feature I don't actually use. It's got the target turrets, however, and I do use those a lot. Um, in fact, that's the reason I've gone through several scopes on this rifle, trying to find a scope that the clicks were repeatable and accurate and that I could trust. I finally found a scope that I can trust. I don't know if you can make it out this distance. We can maybe shoot a close-up later. I've got a little piece of masking tape around the, the dial here, and it's got the yardages marked off. And uh, so, you know, I laser range, and then I just click in the distance, click back. A very handy feature makes uh, shooting out to longer ranges much more precise. But it does require a scope that you can trust, and the only way you can find out is to actually get out and test it and use it. Like I say, I, I went through several scopes before I, I finally found one that works. The others that didn't work were also loopholed, by the way. Paying big money and, and having a big brand name doesn't guarantee you success. Uh, you've got to go out and actually try it. Anyway, that's this rifle. Uh, just extremely accurate, hits hard. As you can see, it launches these chucks pretty nicely. And it's just become our favorite all-around rifle. Between Tim and I, I think we've killed, I, I keep fairly good records, uh, about 600 rock chucks with this rifle alone. So it's a winner for sure. Uh, all that said, though, uh, gosh, if you got a factory 220 Swift, it'll do exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Uh, the rests that we use, Again, we've gone through a bunch of different things. If you've got some of our older videos, you'll remember we used to use a, a tripod bench rest style front rest a lot. Um, I played with bipods, uh, all kinds of different stuff. For this kind of shooting, I have settled on these shooting bags from Doggone Good. These are just exceptional quality bags. These things are built I mean, they're absolutely bulletproof. You could drag one of these things behind your pickup truck down a dirt road for 15 miles and it'll be just fine. Uh, Don guarantees them for life. If you do happen to drag it behind your pickup truck and, and put a hole in it, he'll fix it for free. Uh, but what we really like about them compared to the other devices and methods that we've used is how versatile they are and how quick and easy they are to deploy. You know, with the old bench rest style tripod front rest, you're cranking on the wheel and you're doing this and you're doing that. This thing, you just slap it on the table, swivel it around. Uh, you can make elevation angle changes real easily. We even use it prone. Uh, I found that it's more versatile and steady and easier to shoot off of laying down than with a bipod. Just as far as I'm concerned, this is a better mouse trap. This is what we use, and uh, we're, we're sold on, on these bags. Now, the other piece of equipment that you absolutely, absolutely can't go rock chuck shooting without is binoculars. I cannot stress enough the importance of having your binoculars. You can tell from the film here, from what you see, 
you know, when we zoom in on these rock chucks, even these ones, these are not very far away. The shots we're taking in this spot are only about 250 yards. But you can see how hard it is to see those rock chucks. They blend in with their, their environment so well. Um, literally, I mean, it's impossible to see them with your naked eye from here, 250 yards away. It's just impossible. So the only way to acquire targets and to be able to shoot the rock chucks is if you look through your binoculars. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about what kind you should get. That's personal preference. Uh, Tim uses these Wind River loop holds. Uh, this is a 10 by 40, actually a 10 by 42, excuse me. He absolutely loves them. I like them too. Good clear glass, compact, lightweight, durable, pretty hard to beat. I'm using these little bit larger Swarovskis. Uh, this is an eight and a half by 42. I personally prefer the wider field of view of the lower magnification. I like an eight, seven and a half, eight and a half power binocular for the wider field of view uh, because you know you're glassing a lot of terrain and, and it helps. I chose this model over others uh, based purely on ergonomics. These things fit my hands. They, they fit my face, they're comfortable for me to hold and use for hours and hours and hours in a day. Uh, yes, they have stunning quality glass, but once you get into the higher end binoculars, you know, and I, and I do consider these to be higher end, you know, let's say once you get over three, four hundred dollars, the glass is going to be good. You're going you're gonna to have good glass. Base your decision on comfort and ease of use. Uh, don't buy a pair of high-end binoculars without being able to handle them first. Go to a store where you can actually pick them up, feel them, play with them. Uh, I, you know, just based on reading specifications and searching the internet and price, etc., I had myself sold on a pair of Leicas. I was not going to get these Swarovskis until I went to a store and handled them both. And uh, nothing against the Leicas. They're fantastic glass. They're, they're just utterly superb. However, these were just far more comfortable in my hands and fit in my face, uh, so it was a no-brainer, uh, unfortunately, because these were quite a bit more expensive. But at any rate, got to have the binoculars, uh, rifle of your choice. I highly recommend these bags. Main thing though is just get out there and have some fun. Just do it. Uh, Gosh, like I say, I mentioned earlier, this is not high volume chuck shooting that we're doing here. We'll probably only end up killing 10, 15 chucks for the day. But gosh, what fun. What, what could be better, you know? Uh, just go out and enjoy yourself. Have some fun. Get out there with whatever you've got and have fun with it. That's the main thing. Yeah. Looking quite launchable. What fun is this, man? I'm here to tell you. Overlooking just all this gorgeous country. Pleasant day in May. Nobody else around. We got, seems like we got 100 square miles to ourselves out here. This is awesome. This is awesome. enough this isn't high volume shooting 
like the uh, chucks we shoot around agricultural areas. You know, we might get uh, 40, 50, even 60 chucks in a day. This is completely different. We're out in these river gorge valleys and uh, we're familiar with the area. We know like this hillside, we've shot chucks here many times. We know it holds them, but you've got to be patient. The whole deal is to slow down, relax, use your binoculars, blast the hill, and be patient, and these guys will show. We've been here about an hour. That was the fifth chuck we've seen. We've killed all five. Uh, but this is just so darn much fun, just sitting out here. Temperature's perfect. Scenery is absolutely stunning. Uh, good shooting rifle, good friends. I mean, just slow down and enjoy it. It's the name of the game. Yeah, you really got to pick each one of these little rock piles apart piece by piece. Yeah, yeah. Because you sometimes do. you'll just see their nose or an ear peeking up over. Yeah, yeah. Cannot be emphasized enough. If you don't have binoculars growing out of your forehead, you're missing out on, on the majority of your, your shots. Like I say, most of the time, all you're going to see is a, a nose, a head. Flatten out a little body, just yeah. flat. Yeah. Yeah, they really blend in well in their environment. Well, what do you say we leave these for seed? Yeah. Move on down the road. Let's do it. That was absolutely filthy. Can you say wow? <laughs> oh my gosh. That was unreal. Another one. Quick pair.
they cooperate like that. Your turn, Tim. One that's got like a nose poking out of it, big tall cliff. Uh huh. Look just up and to the right. Big glowing seal. Oh yeah. Yeah. Bring me back down to the alley after that last shot. No doubt about that one. Mm -hmm. Spectacular. That one definitely took flight. That was plum filthy. Plum filthy. Boy, that is a small target. Let's give it a shot, though. Still there. Hi, I think. He went high. <laughs> oh, the little sucker flew. Nice. And you were on the money. Sorry about the hair. Ain't no beauty parlor out here. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Yep. Nice little 350 yard poke. It's getting warming up, getting hot. We've nailed them pretty good in this little canyon. I think maybe we ought to leave them for seed and call it a morning for this spot. Too much fun. Too much fun.
Goose. left where we just were. It is. If you want a good shooting bag, there you go, right there. Yep, it's the combo. This is what Berman Camp typically looks like for us. It's a Saturday morning in August. We drove in the night before, Friday night after I got off work. Just uh, threw out our calots and our sleeping bags in the dark. It's a pretty quick and easy way to make camp. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes to set up and not more than 10 minutes to pack up and be out there getting after the chucks works good for us.
Nicely done. Yeah, first one of the morning. Good start. That was a giant too. Yeah, he looked big in the scope. Big old boar. Oh. This is our annual high country chuck hunting trip. Uh, you know, you've seen earlier in the video we've hunted some lower elevations at River Gorge Lava Country in Idaho, some agricultural stuff, but at least once a year we pick us a spot. We usually go somewhere different each year. Get up above Timberline, up 10, 11,000 feet elevation. Escape the heat down in the valleys. It's uh, well over 90, 100 degrees down in Salt Lake City today where we live, but we're up here at almost 11,000 feet. You see his jacket weather. It's glorious, God's country. Don't know how many chucks we're going to find today, but we're going to have a ball doing it. Stay cool. That will. Looking pretty. Got another one. The original one we were looking at over to the right. Down off the skyline a little bit facing us. Okay. Yeah, we've had some quick action off this little pile. We probably ought to move on, find another spot. This uh, this high country hunting is is different than some of the other stuff you've seen us doing. You, you almost are never going to be able to just set up in one spot for very long and shoot. Like in the agricultural areas, you'll see us sit in one spot, set up a table and sandbags, and and shoot for a couple hours without moving. Uh, even some of that river gorge stuff will set up the table and, and sit for a while. But the nature of the beast up here is, is stick and move, stick and move. Uh, a, you're never going to get very big colonies. You're never going to get too many off of a single rock pile. And B, we just don't like to to take them all out of a of a of a pile like this. We like to leave some seed for next time. So we took three off here chop chop I think we ought to go find us another pile take three more I think I plunked that sucker. You did. <laughs> yeah. Close to 400, huh? Yeah, just under 400 yards. Nice. Five for five this morning. 
Getting to be just about your turn, Tim. Launched him. Now, Tim, come to that big round rock we've been talking about to the right uh -huh. of the last one you shot. Off the left edge of it, you've got one. Nice. That one exited stage right. <laughs> That's too much fun right there. Too much fun. Do that. Launched him. It's just some gorgeous country or what? Stunning. I ain't mean, just stunning. I mean, look at this.
missed, but he didn't survive. Got that one. Who has more fun, Tim? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Making pigs fly. Making pigs fly. Well, two of them coming down. That one's going. Got him. Nice shot. Nice shot. There was a couple scampering around coming down. Beautiful. Beautiful. When pigs fly. I got him. Your turn. Get in on some of this fun, Tim. I'm hogging the hogs. Beauty. Nice. Nice. Let the air right out of him. That's what we like to do. Let the air out of him. Time to leave.
keep some seed and ramble. Yeah. Well, folks, just in case we're done for the day, thanks for watching Varmint Safari 3 When Pigs Fly. I sure enjoyed it.